suspected jihadists are being blamed for the massacre of more than 130 civilians in neighboring towns in central Mali. Authorities believe the killings are reprisals after clashes earlier this month. For more on all of this, we can bring in France 24's Wasim Nasser. Wasim, good afternoon. What happened and why? Well, actually, uh, as you said, the many local sources are talking about uh, reprisals, but we have to put this in in uh, in the historical frame, uh, if I may say so. In the beginning of the month, there was Malian uh, army operations in Dukuru and Yalema, for example, and people from those villages who were uh, attacked, and we have a map, and we can see those uh, those villages, were accused or suspected uh, by uh, jihadi factions on the ground, meaning Jni, meaning Al Qaeda, of aiding the uh, Malian army in its operation as uh, guides, for example, for the operations. And here, as we see on the map, the uh, the villages that were attacked lately are the ones we are seeing in yellow, mm. but the villages we are seeing in red are the massacres that were made by Malian armed forces against mostly Fulani populations in those uh, villages. So we have this reprisals, as you said, for what happened at the beginning of the month, Malian operations with uh, Wagner uh, Russian mm. operatives, but we also have, in the same frame, those massacres that happened in the late three uh, uh, months and targeting the uh, Fulani or Pearl uh, popu uh, population. What's interesting also about this issue is that those villages who were attacked had a, an, a, an agreement with jihadi factions since February 2021, meaning that there was a truth between jihadi factions and uh, militants uh, in those villages. Adding to that, those villages are multi-ethnic. It's not only Fulani. We have only also uh, Dogon among them, uh, for example. And we know that which wasn't in the agreement, but asked by uh, Al Qaeda jihadis, they asked for men, for to recruit men for those villages to give some men as a gauge of uh, goodwill towards them. It wasn't. Uh, fulfilled and the Malian operations lately added to the complications or uh, on the, of the situation, knowing that most of the Fulani fighters in the rank of Jnim that attacked those villages would uh, belong to the populations that were kicked out of the region mm. by Dogon fighters with the Malian army back in 2019. So the roots of those massacres go back in time and were aggravated by the latest operations by my army and Wagner operative because uh, according to local uh, sources, the villages that were attacked uh, by uh, the Malian army and Wagner, like Dukoro and Yalema, they were stealing of, uh, of belongings, even uh, the gold of uh, women, as I was told, and the whales were, the de uh, water points were destroyed and the cattle was, uh, was stolen. So this is what happened on spot, but we have one more time to take it back a few months back mm. and maybe a few years back to understand the reason for those massacres. And what, what, what could the consequences for the country be, the consequences for Mali? Right? Well, the consequences are very, uh, very, uh, very worrying uh, because, for example, uh, Bamako uh, said there will be three days of grievance for those who were killed, but some voices are saying, but why not declare days of grievance also for the hundreds that uh, were killed from the Tuareg population for example, lately, and we talked about it here uh, in Menaka and Menaka region. For example, populations killed at this time by the by the uh, by the Islamic State. Mm. So it is it will it is contributing to uh, create more friction among uh, the populations uh, on the ground because of the massacres and because of the political answer and because of the lack of what the Malian called the montée en puissance, which is going stronger, the army going stronger and uh, and uh, containing uh, jihadi. Uh, jihadi jihadi factions. It's not happening on the ground because the only thing is hap which is happening is mass uh, massacres of civilians uh, by by both uh, by both uh, sides, which which will uh, finally uh, fuel the recruitment of uh, militias who are against the jihadis, but also of jihadis, knowing that militias are uh, said to be pro-government. But actually, they, they work on their own and even w went into confrontation sometimes with Malian uh, armed forces. So all this will contribute in the, uh, in the comp uh, more and more, uh, more, and more uh, violence, knowing at the same time that Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State are fighting for these grounds with, the, with uh, Barkhane leaving uh, French forces, yeah. leaving uh, the area. And they are fighting for recruitment. And what's interesting, and we'll end up uh, uh, by this, that when uh, the Jnim al-Qaeda asked for men 
to be recruited on those villages, you have to know that it is multi-ethnic recruitment. So uh, going way beyond Arab and uh, Fulani uh, recruits to uh, touch other communities that weren't very concerned by jihad up to this point. But the war between Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State will force civilians in this area, as in other areas, to join one group or the other. Fascinating, but lots of moving parts in the story. Thank you very much for that, Wasim Wasim Nasser.